Okay, okay. So today we have Isolation by Joy Division. Now, Joy Division, I always come back to this band. I love them. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm sad they weren't together for much longer. But of course, we got New Order out of it all. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, this one is Isolation. Again, so many Joy Division songs are requested. And uh, I'm happy they are because, you know, I love, you know, I love this band. Uh, so anyway, let's get into it. Talk about it after. It's only less than three minutes, which I was surprised by. So anyway, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So that was... Oh. <laughs> My God. All right. So there it is. Isolation from Joy Division. And then, like I said, you know, a shorter song, you know, th under three minutes. But obviously, you know, it's just, I mean, from the opening freaking thing from, you know, the opening bass from Peter Hook. And I, I always talk about Peter Hook. You know, everyone in this band I love, you know, like, as, I, and it's not a lie when I say I love this band, because I love Ian Curtis's, you know, obviously his freaking voice, you know, that uh, baritone vocals. I couldn't think of the word baritone for a second, but the baritone vocals. And I love, you know, when he's saying isolation, you know, how he, you know, he changes up in the chorus, you know, how he says isolation the three times he says it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, you know, he, he goes so deep. It's just like, my God, uh, of course, Bernard Sumner on synthesizer here. Uh, and that just that, you know, that thin synthesizer and just, I don't know, it's so, you know, kind of creepy in a way, you know, I don't know. And again, it just, it just fits the band, obviously. And like I said, Peter Hook and bass guitar, obviously. And like, I think I've said before, but you know, he's probably, you know, my favorite bassist I've heard, you know, I just love his sound. It's so distinct. And like I said, how we started off the track and it's just like, you're automatically, it's yeah, that's Joy Division right there. That's Joy Division. My God. But, um, <laughs> and then of course, Stephen Moore is here, not just on drums, but the electronic drums here. And I just love, you know, this, how this band, you know, just incorporated things like, you know, the synthesizer, the electronic drums, you know, they were all over, you know, kind of, um, uh, how music was changing, I guess you would say. And of course, like I said, you know, like I always say, Joy Division uh, reactions and how they would really utilize that kind of thing 
uh, and new order. It's just like, my God, they were just, you know, I, I would say they're ahead of their time. I mean, yeah, I mean, my God. And, um, but of course, it's just, it's another dark song. But I mean, I would have to say, you know, it didn't give me such a dark feeling that other Joy Division songs have given me, uh, you know, even though they're talking about, you know, the song's called Isolation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it didn't really give me such a dark feel, you know, that I get from other, that I've gotten from other, you know, Joy Division songs, like I said. Um, but I mean, yeah, just, uh, and again, I, like I said, I love everyone in this band, you know, from the electronic beat that uh, Stephen Morris was laying down here. Uh, and like I said, that friggin' thin keyboard by uh, Bernard Sumner. And uh, I'm just looking at, you know, the personnel here again, if there's anything else I really need to say. But yeah, and of course, it all ends up, you know, uh, cul you know, culminating into that dramatic end. And again, you know, the dramatic end where I thought it was, it was over. And then all of a sudden, they come back, you know, the sound comes back in and then it goes away. It's just like... You got me. But yeah, so I just so I just really enjoyed uh and again just how you know they packed a punch in just like I said, like two minutes and fifty five seconds. Um I just you know just really enjoyed, you know, uh and again it's just like I guess uh you know, obviously a cut from their album uh closer. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's Closer, not Closer, but from their album, which was the second track on the album. So again, it's just like, if you listen to the full album, um, you know, and how this song is kind of, you know, I don't know. I feel like when you listen, you listen to the whole closer album from joy division this track is just like it's it's amongst other great tracks it's just like because that's the whole thing with joy division every song they put out and i asked the question before and i got a couple comments saying uh because i said you know is there any bad <laughs> joy division track and i got a couple people saying i don't think so you know not really and there was somebody i think that said you know one song but again you know they had uh how many songs hold the phone I just wanted to see because I was looking at uh, there is a Joy Division, you know, ranking every one of their songs, which I guess they had 47 songs. And it's just like 47 songs. And it's just like, you know, a lot of people say, you know, they can't really find one that's like just terrible. You know, it just, I don't know, I just like it a lot. And of course, you know, the band, you know, when they obviously when they were done, it's just it wasn't because they wanted to split up. It's because obviously Ian, Ian died. But, you know, just, I mean, like I said, from the icy hook from Peter Hook, the icy bait, not hook, but the icy friggin' bass line. I'm just, you know, I'm all over the song. I just really enjoyed it, so I can't even talk. But yeah, the icy bass line from Peter Hook, and obviously, like I said, just the, uh, and how I guess you would say that Unknown Pleasures, of course, from Joy Division, Joy Division, uh, you know, they, they introduced basically the whole, um, electronic thing, the whole, you know, what they were doing here, but on this album, it'd be kind of, it kind of became their sound in a way, which I just, like I said, I just love how, and then of course, like I said, again, how they would go on in new order to, you know, really incorporate that even more. And it's just, I don't know, like I said, they're so far ahead of the time. I can't even talk about this. I don't know. Joy Division just gets me. I don't know. They just get me, um, in a way that other bands can't. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just their sound. Yes, I don't know. There's certain bands, obviously, that speak to you. And, I mean, Joy Division is a band that, you know, just speaks to me. My God. But, you know, just looking at, you know, some of these lyrics. I mean, maybe all the lyrics. <laughs> Let's just see anyway. But from the first verse. First verse. Uh, I got to finish my words. In fear of every day, every evening, he calls her aloud from above. Carefully watched for a reason. Painstaking devotion and love. Love the rhyming here as well. Surrender to self-preservation from others who care for themselves. <laughs> a blindness that touches perfection but hurts just like anything else. And again, one thing about Joy Division, the uh, the lyricism never takes a back seat. You know, even, you know, when you talk about their music being so brooding or haunting or even here, like I said, it didn't give me that haunting feel. But like I said, the... Um, the keyboards were still kind of, you know, haunting in a way. But again, the song overall didn't give me such a dark feeling. But still, the lyricism is so good every time, you know. And then go right into the chorus, like I said, with uh, isolation, isolation, and, you know, going on. And then the second verse, Mother, I tried. Please believe me. I'm doing the best that I can. I know that feeling. I'm ashamed of the things I've been put through. I'm ashamed of the person I am. And then again, we go into the chorus. And there are some annotations here actually on Genius. Uh, and it has it says, you know, I'm ashamed of the person I am. There's one annotation. Ian had expressed regret in the way he was living his life. Uh, the confusion and isolation is one of the reasons he took his life. So, I mean, yeah, there's no upvotes or anything for that comment. But I mean, you can probably, yeah, it's easy to assume, I guess you would say. And then you go into the third verse, but if you could just see the beauty, these things I could never describe, these pleasures, a wayward distraction, this is my one lucky prize. And then the chorus goes on there. And there's one annotation here, which actually has a lot of upvotes. So I'll just read this. So Curtis's affair, as romantic as it might have been, uh, was simultaneously detrimental to his marriage. Yeah. Hence it being something beyond his description. Uh, yet when he's with his mistress, it's a pleasure, a wayward distraction from his internal agonies. Uh, however, perhaps another interpretation is that these lines refer to the product of his isolation, his music. Uh, as a poetic songwriter, he sees beauty in these things, 
uh, and, and things most people don't see beauty in, uh, making these lyrics with Joy Division as sort of a distraction, even for a brief moment for his inner frustration. So again, Ian Curtis, you know, it, yeah, I mean, it's an understatement to say that he was a complicated man, that he was, you know, hurting, that he was, you know, just, you know, obviously, and again, yeah, the, the affair, obviously, <laughs> that didn't help things, you know, and the depression and all that stuff, and, you know, his uh, epilepsy, everything about it, you know, he's talking about, but he took solace in the music, and he took solace in things that, you know, some people might not have looked for solace in, um, and, you know, seeing the beauty in different things, you know, all that stuff, so... Anyway, I, I say it every time, but I mean, every time you listen to Joy, Joy Division, you have to mention, you know, just Ian Curtis was such a brilliant mind and such a brilliant uh, singer and, you know, lyricist and everything. And it's just, you know, such a loss. But I mean, and again, you know, what could have been? He died at the age of 24. I mean, or uh, 23 or 24. I can't remember now. Actually, hey, Google, how old was Ian Curtis when he died? Ian Curtis was 23 years old. 23. In 1980. I mean, my God, 23 years old, older, I'm older than him at 24 now. That's just nuts and he, to think of what he did at that age. But anyway, I'm saying things I've said a lot before. But anyway, like I said, I love this band, love everything about them. Uh, Peter Hook, Bernard Sumner, Stephen Morse, and Ian Curtis were just a match made in heaven. And uh, yeah, just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this track, I have to say. Um, and like I said, it probably, you know, it, it's probably even better um, when you just listen to the whole album, you know, from uh, both of their albums, really. Um, cause it's just like every song is so important and every song just fits with one after the other. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, that's just what else comes to mind, but I'd probably like this even more if I just listened to the whole, uh, closer album. But anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all the stuff. Really appreciate all the support and uh, always happy to come back to Joy Division. I mean, they're a joy to listen to. Maybe not, you know, all the time, you know, you know, uh, cause they're, they are dark, like I say, but you know, like all, everyone knows, but again, they're, uh, they were, they were good. So <laughs> anyway, thanks again. I'll talk to you guys again <laughs> soon.